Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of this new project that I'm starting. I'm gonna create a procedurally generated voxel based RPG game that also supports multiplayer. Uh, I know, I know, I know, the, 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 those words together doesn't work well if you're just one person, but... I wanted to start a larger project lately because I've been doing a lot of smaller one-off projects. And this game specifically we're gonna make is a game I've been wanted to make for a long time. This is my dream, dream game. Just for the fact that I want this game to be multiplayer is the reason I've never started working on this game. But multiplayer programming is a skill I've been starting to learn recently, as you saw in my last video. Oh, so you're going to make Minecraft code, is he? <laughs> no, this is going to be a Cube World clone. Okay, Cube World inspired game. Let's say that instead. The core pillar around the game revolves around exploration and character progression through exploration. Travel the skies, travel the waters. Travel the land to become a better fighter. Yosh! So, you know, pretty much cube world. Since this game contains all of these scary words, uh, it's a bad idea to make them all from scratch myself. Cause it would take ages to make. Okay, so procedural generation, let's start with that. I know a bit of theory of how these worlds are generated, but actually building a system like this takes a very long time, it would probably take me months to make myself. So I'm actually gonna buy an asset from the Unity Asset Store that I found a few years back. The deal however is this costs money, but honestly 5 euros for this seems like a steal. So goodbye money, hello world generation. I've been digging through the source code for this a bit, which I probably can't show on the screen, but... <laughs> The deal with buying assets like this is you get a base to work with. I know for a fact I will have to refactor some code later on because this library doesn't support different biomes, which is a thing I will need. So most of the time buying an asset like this won't give you perfect procedural generation. You actually have to do some digging yourself. But we're not gonna do that much today. We're gonna focus on starting with the building blocks, making a small game you can actually play before we start looking into making fancy, beautiful worlds. This is what the first few days looked like. I was focusing heavily on learning network programming fundamentals. I researched. I read articles. What? <laughs> I watched videos. Okay. I read some okay. more. I wrote some code! After all these years, I finally understand. Uh, uh oh. After many attempts, I successfully made. <clears throat> I successfully made. I said. I successfully made client side prediction, a rollback system, and snapshot interpolation. Also, just fancy words for networking programming techniques. There are so many different moving parts that if one thing goes wrong, it can be quite hard to figure out what went wrong. Especially when you do time traveling, which is a technique you have to do <laughs> when you're doing network programming. I learned a lot from doing this cube project, and I wanna start working on this game, it's about time. Time, it's about time. If you wanna learn networking, I will post links down below that helped me out greatly. Anyway, so the first goal I have is to make cubes that can simply move around. Start simple. And what I'm gonna focus on early on is getting people to actually try the game out very early. So I invited a bunch of people, we found a few bugs. Oh I see you, I see you coming down. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty much it so far. A very big issue I'm currently tackling with is Unity Physics. I can't use it because it is not deterministic. When you the player plays the game, you actually predict where your player will be. The inputs you do on your keyboard is sent to the server and the server actually moves the physics and tells you if the player's position is in the wrong place. And this is where we time travel. We have to do a rollback on the client, the player. And using Unity Physics we can see this happens way too often. Every time I print a line here, that means the client, the player, has to teleport to the correct position. So, I'm gonna have to buy another asset. Take my money! <laughs> and this one is going to hurt my wallet quite a bit. This is a character controller that is terministic and they have a lot of examples of double jump, wall jump, climbing up slopes. This asset will be very important for me. It will make things so much easier, so I'm gonna have to buy that too. Goodbye money. 
I pretty much covered everything I've done up until this present moment. So I guess we gotta talk about game design a little bit. What are my plans? I wanna have a system similar to Final Fantasy IX and Kingdom Hearts. Okay, this is how it works. So in Final Fantasy IX, it has a really cool skill system, I think. So skills can be tied directly to a weapon. Let's say you have a dagger, and the dagger has a skill that you can learn. By equipping this dagger, you get this skill available to you. But if you unequip it, then you won't be able to use that skill, unless you have used this dagger for long enough. Through using this dagger, you will eventually learn this skill and you will be able to use different equipments and cast this skill you just learned. What I love about this system is that it encourages you to use different weapons. As of Kingdom Hearts 2, I haven't played that game in many years and I'm just going off of what I remember. So I think when you level up, you get a skill point. With this point, you can decide what skills you want to be able to use. Some skills cost more skill points, but the deal with this is that you can swap them around however you want. An aspect I enjoy in this design is that, let's say you unlock a powerful spell, but it costs a lot of skill points to equip. So what do you do? Well, you have to sacrifice some other skills if you want to be able to use this super powerful one. And through that, you will have to experiment with different combination of spells. So yeah, that's that idea. This is starting to sound like a fairy tale, I mean... How am I going to make these two work together? I don't know. Uh, it sounds a bit complicated. Yes. These are things I have on my mind regarding skill progression. I just wanted to put that out there and hear what you guys think about it. So, leave a comment. <laughs> Alright, that concludes the first episode of this voxel game. It doesn't have a name yet, but we'll figure that out later. If you want to follow along this journey, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This is going to be incredibly hard, but hey, if we fail, at least we have learned something along the way. And, uh, well, I made some videos about it, so I have something to show for it anyway. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.